Welcome to the fifth video in this web scraping series, where we will show you everything about web scraping, from how to collect data, how to store it, and even how to avoid getting blocked. In part one, we learned a little bit about the basics of scraping with Python, and we built our first Python scraper. In part two, we learned how to clean the scraped data. In part three, we learned how to store and save this data to a file or a database. Finally, in part four, we learned how to make our scraper more robust by handling failed requests with retries and also speeding things up with concurrency. Note, we'll be using and building the code from previous parts, so if you haven't seen them already, be sure to check them out. In this part, we'll explain how to use fake user agents and fake browser headers to bypass restrictions on sites trying to prevent scraping. When you start scraping large amounts of data, some sites might decide to block your requests. Sites like Amazon monitor visitors' IP addresses and user agents to detect unusual behavior. If you are identified as a scraper, your request will be blocked. You can manage user agents and browser headers to avoid this. We will add this to our chocolate.co.uk project. A user agent is just a string sent by a user's browser to identify some details about it, like the operating system, browser, browser version, etc. If we make a request from Python, a lot of the time it could get blocked because it could say we are doing so from code. By changing our user agent to mimic an actual web browser, we can trick sites into thinking we are an actual human making requests. So before we get started, let's create a new file called testing user agents to test some user agent code. First of all, we will import requests. And then we will define a headers dictionary and paste in a header that we got online. Now when we make a request with requests, saying request.get to the HTTP bin website and pass in the defined headers, when we print response.json and run the script, you can see that the headers we sent are the ones we defined above. We can take this a step further by defining a list of user agents and taking one out of the list at random. So let's firstly import random. Let's define a user agent list and paste in a bunch of user agents. We will then change our headers dictionary to pick a user agent from the list at random. We can do this by saying user agents list and for the index, we will use random.randint to take a number from zero to the length of the user agent list minus one. Now when we run the script, it will take a random user agent and if we run it again, you can see the user agent changes. Each time we run it, it will take a random user agent from the list. So we can add the user agent logic to our chocolate scraper. First by defining a class called user agent middleware. In the constructor, we will take the scrape ops API key and the number of user agents. So here, instead of defining a static list of user agents, we will try and get the user agents list from ScrapeOps. ScrapeOps offers a free user agent API and it allows you to get a full list of user agents which will be randomized on each request. We will define a get user agents function, which takes a number of user agents. And then we will make a request to the ScrapeOps API In this case, it would be headers.scrapeops.io slash v1 slash user agents, passing in the API key and the number of results. So if the response of status code is 200, then we will convert the response to JSON and we will assign the result from the body to the user agent list. If the user agent list is zero, so if there's nothing returned, then we can just print a warning saying that the scrape ops user agent list is empty. Else we will print that there was an error. We can print the status code and also the error content. If there was an error, we want to fall back on a static list of user agents, which we will define in a moment. 
create that fallback function, we will just define use fallback user agent list. We'll print a warning specifying that we are using a fallback user agent list. And we will just return a static list of user agents, similar to the example we used before. We will then define a function called get random user agent, which just like before, we'll use the randint function from the random module, which will take a number from zero to the length of the user agent list minus one, and it will return the list using that index. Let's not forget to import the randint function from random. Now if we scroll down to main, we can just comment out the code we have there currently, just so we can test the user agent middleware. So we will create an instance of the user agent middleware and paste in our scrape ops API key. We will then define our headers, which in this case will call the user agent middleware to get a random user agent. We will then make a request to HTTP again to see what headers we are sending. And we will print the response. Now let's activate our virtual environment and run the scraper. You can see we are sending this particular user agent, which has been generated by ScrapeOps if we call the get random user agent function a couple of times and run the script, you can see each time it's a different user agent. Now let's remove this code and move the user agent middleware above our current scraping code and uncomment it out. To add this to our scraper, we just come back to the retry logic class. And we can add an argument called use fake user agents with a default value of false. And in our make request function, we will define headers, which will either be the headers being passed down optionally or a dictionary that's empty. Then if we want to use the fake user agents, then we can define the user agent key which will be equal to the user agent middleware dot get random user agent like we did before. And then when we are making the request, we will pass the defined headers. Finally, just so we don't forget, we will add use fake user agents to the retry logic constructor as true. Now when we run the script, we are using fake user agents to make our request you can still see that the product data.csv file is populated with the data. For simple websites, simply setting an up-to-date user agent will allow you to scrape the data reliably. However, many popular websites are increasingly using sophisticated anti-bot technologies to prevent data scraping. These solutions analyze not only your request's user agent, but also the other headers a real browser normally sends. We can also fake these browser headers. So just like with the user agents, let's create a file called testing browser headers. We will import requests and we will create a request to HTTP bin. When we print the response.json and the headers, you can see that the headers returned contain a lot more information than just the user agent. To send our own set of browser headers, we can import random, like we did before, and create a headers list, which is a list of the headers we want to send. We will then make a choice out of the headers list using the random library to pick headers to send to the website, and we'll pass them in our request. Now when we run our script, you can see that the headers being returned are the ones that we defined. To add this to our scraper, just like with the user agent middleware, we can create a browser headers middleware. Again, let's define a constructor. 
And just like before, with scrape ops, we can get these browser headers from their API. So we will define the scrape ops API key and the number of headers we want to retrieve. We'll set the browser headers list to an empty list. We'll set the API key and we will call get browser headers. Let's define the get browser headers function, which takes a number of headers. And just like before with the user agent middleware, we'll make a request to ScrapeOps to get a list of browser headers. This time it's headers.scrapeops.io slash v1 slash browser headers, passing in the API key and the number of results. If the response status code is 200, then we want to get the JSON response. Then we want to set the browser headers list to be the result of that JSON response. If the length of the browser headers list is equal to zero, i.e. ScrapeOps did not return any browser headers, then we want to print a warning stating that. Like before, if ScrapeOps did not return any headers, we want to fall back on a static list. If the response status code was not 200, we just want to print a warning saying that the status code was something else and the error itself. Again, we want to fall back on the static list if that's the case. Just like before, we will define the use fallback headers list, which returns a static list of browser headers. We will then define a get random browser headers function, which will pick a random browser header from the list. Just like before, we will use rand int to generate a number from zero to the length of the browser headers list minus one, and we will return that index. Now when we scroll down to main, let's take the ScrapeOps API key and put it in its own variable. We will assign that to the user agent middleware. And we will create a browser headers middleware. Passing in the ScrapeOps API key and the number of headers. Now when we call browser headers middleware dot get random browser headers, and we print the headers, and then just like before, if we print it out a couple of times, you can see when we run the script, the browser headers are being printed to the console. So let's delete those examples and then come up to our retry logic class. And let's change the use fake user agents variable to use fake browser headers, still with a default value of false, and let's assign it in the constructor. Now in the make request function, instead of checking for use fake user agents, we will say if use fake browser headers, and then we will assign some fake browser headers to be browser headers middleware dot get random browser headers. And then for each key and value in that dictionary, which we can access by saying dot items, set that particular key in the headers dictionary 
to that value. Finally, let's come back down to our main function and let's replace the use fake user agents with use fake browser headers on our retry logic class. Now when we run our script, we are now scraping data with fake browser headers. So that's everything we're going to cover in this part. We hope you have a good understanding of how to use user agents and browser headers to effectively bypass any website that might be blocking or limiting your ability to scrape. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Also, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.